A legend is created mostly by his or her actions. But this enemy from the Mario series? Well, it became a legend by just appearing on the screen. The Piranha Plant, a large monstrous plant encountered throughout the entire Mario franchise. And today we're going to fully analyze this enemy from its early years until the present day, to see how it changed in terms of use, story, gameplay and design. This enemy was in the Super Mario series from the very first game, Super Mario Bros, which was released in 1985. They are almost always portrayed as leafy, green stalk-topped Venus flytrap, with a white-spotted red or green globe and sharp teeth reminiscent of piranhas. So they are actually based on a combination of a certain flesh-eating plant and fish. The Venus flytrap is a carnivorous plant native to subtropical wetlands on the east coast of the United States, in North Carolina and South Carolina. It catches its prey, mostly insects and spiders, by trapping them in its mouth. When an insect or spider crawls along the leaves and contacts a hair, the trap closes if a different hair is contacted within 20 seconds of the first strike. The requirement of a second trigger is a safeguard against wasting energy. And then we have the piranha, a freshwater fish that inhabits South American rivers. They are known for their sharp teeth and powerful jaws. They look scary, but actually rarely attack humans and are omnivorous, meaning that they eat both meat and plants. So for this enemy, Nintendo clearly took two weird and pretty scary creatures with some amazing abilities. And the end result was the Piranha Plant. They have been strategically placed by Bowser to impede Mario's progress on his quest to save Princess Toadstool. The Piranha Plants inhabit pipes and attack by biting Mario or Luigi if they come into contact. They can be defeated with a fireball, by kicking a Koopa or a Buzzy Beetle shell at them, or by touching them while empowered by a Starman. Now these enemies are used as some sort of trap, since you don't always know if there's a piranha plant in the pipe or not. This is another enemy that was meant to keep you on your toes, so that you wouldn't just sprint through the level. The first platformers had to come up with obstacles so that people wouldn't just run and jump through the entire level with ease. Something to stop them in their tracks to make sure that they would possibly die if they just ignored it. The piranha plant was great for this, since you don't see it coming until the very end, so you would usually slow down near pipes for if one would appear. This trend even continued on throughout the entire series. Now this was not the end for them, oh no. The next game where we saw them was in Super Mario Bros 3. Sure, they were also seen in lost levels, but here we only saw a red version that is faster. So that's not too impressive or important. In the third Mario game, things changed a bit. Nintendo started to create variations of existing enemies. This was a great way to grow the franchise in the iconic monsters, and also to create a more diverse range of enemies. Enemies like the Goombas and Koopas got different versions, and this also goes for the Piranha Plant. Several variations of them were introduced in Super Mario Bros. 3, including Fire Piranha Plant, Big Piranha Plant, and Patui. First one being a version that shoots fireballs at you, second the huge version, and the last one is a bit weird. They are a type of piranha plant that has the ability to walk, although some of them are stationed in pipes. They also have the ability to shoot spiky balls out of their mouths. So this version presents an even bigger challenge to the player, since you have to dodge the spiky balls. And the same goes for the fire version, but this time you need to dodge fire. And the big one is just harder to jump over, but besides this isn't too special. So they expanded on the skill set of the piranha plant, they can shoot at you and can even run up to you and attack you. Normally you had to approach them, but this time it can also happen the other way around. Now because of these new, more difficult enemies, the game got way harder compared to the first game. But this was balanced by adding new power-ups for Mario to help him out. Now in the next game they added a variation that fooled hundreds of people, and believe me, it wasn't their fault. This version was so sneaky, but it worked out perfectly. I'm talking about the jumping piranha plants from Super Mario World. They wait until the player comes close, and then they jump out of their pipe or bushes. This way they try to trick the player, since they never did this, so you wouldn't really expect it. Besides this, jumping piranha plants are much more common than their brethren, and therefore they replaced them. Regular piranha plants reappear as rare enemies. In fact, they only appear in one level, Vanilla Dome 3. 
and we only saw an upside down version, which was a cool new way of using the enemy. An upward facing piranha plant was originally going to appear but didn't make it into the game. So they completely replaced the normal version, most likely to give the enemy a bit of an update. The player knew what was going to happen from the previous games, they were too predictable. But the moment came, the entire Mario franchise was going to change. They went to 3D. And this was bad news for the Piranha Plants. They were completely built around the concept of 2D. In 3D, he wouldn't make any sense at all, so they had to change them. There are just plants in the ground now. Normally, these plants are peacefully sleeping, however, if Mario wakes them up, they will try to bite Mario. They can be defeated with most attack methods, most easily by walking towards them, slowly without waking them up, and then punching them. So they became some sort of sleeping guard dogs, since if you walk past them very slowly, they won't wake up. But if you make loads of noise and run past them, they will go nuts and attack you right away. So as you can see, they completely changed. The pipe is completely gone and they aren't really trap enemies like they were before. They are more like guards now, since this probably made more sense in the now 3D world, since the old style would never really work. The variations also returned, but just like the normal ones, completely changed. The fire spitting version is a bit smaller than a normal piranha plant. They grow once Mario approaches, spit a fireball and then retreat by shrinking back to an invisible size. Now these are super annoying in my opinion. Since fire makes Mario run around like a madman. So they certainly changed a lot here compared to their 2D versions. The world was completely different after all, so it had to happen. After this huge change was made, Nintendo started to mess around with the piranha plants even more, as seen in the next game, Super Mario Sunshine. Here they yet again changed the enemy and made something completely new out of them. We see the regular version that you kill by spraying water in their mouths until they blow up, but this one isn't too special. It's overall very similar to Super Mario 64, but this time they don't sleep and there is a paint version of them. There are only two versions that interest me. The first one is the polluted piranhas. They appear out of goop generators in several areas towards the beginning of the game. In order to defeat one, Mario must use fluid to shoot water in its open mouth repeatedly. They don't attack you at all and just sit there. In my opinion they aren't great, but it is something new at least. They are mostly used as mini bosses, which has never happened before, but that's not all. The second one that I was talking about is PD Piranha. The first ever full boss of this enemy and he is loads of fun. He's challenging enough and a bit of a goofy character, so that's a big step for the enemy. But overall it's a bit of a step backwards, since the normal ones and the mini boss are really basic. Now after this we start to see them again in 2D games, where they go back to their original behavior. Being used as trap like enemies, waiting in their pipes to appear as soon as Mario comes around and then they attack. Sure, there are some new versions, but overall these are very similar to the old ones or combinations of. The only actual new version was the Bone Piranha Plant, which was an undead version. But the 3D games? Now here we start to see some big changes. For example in the Galaxy games, here we see new bosses and some new variations. First up, Dino Piranha. This boss is huge and you deal damage to it by hitting the ball on its tail. He works perfectly with the planet and gravity mechanic and he's one of the first bosses so he isn't too hard. He also returns in the second game but he's a bit different. You must break its shell and then attack it from behind. These versions of the piranha plants are a bit like a dinosaur version and completely different from PD, but it's a fun twist. Now they also added the prickly version. This one is bigger and covered in spikes, but overall you defeat him the same way as you normally would. They also added the Inky Piranha Plant, which is a combination of a blooper from Mario Kart and the Piranha Plant. It covers your screen with ink, but I don't really see the use in it since it doesn't cover a lot of the screen. And later on in the Wii U games, they even added a fun twist to the fire spitting one by making it spit the opposite. Ice. Even Lakitu started to throw them at you. What? And in terms of spin-off games, they made loads of appearances. 
You could see them as anything you could imagine. Like enemies, bosses, characters and even items. And an item even appeared in one of the main series games, the potted piranha plant, which would eat any enemy in your path. You could even steal green stars from other players with it. So this was a very fun item and a fun change for once. So this little plant actually did way more than most of us would have expected. He's a legend in his own right. Because believe me, everyone has heard of this plant in some way. Great that you watched this entire video, I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me in the comments section what you thought about the video. Yay, opinions. If you want more videos, click on the screen or go to my channel page and click videos and watch them and subscribe? I guess.